Okay, today's recording is uh, Chris Coleman at the UK Drum Show. Um, I was lucky enough to be there and engineer it myself, and uh, now lucky enough to be mixing it for Vic Firth for all of their socials. Um, my main problem mixing Chris at the show and afterwards was there were some resonant frequencies in the in the snare drum that were that were bothering me, and um, by the time I'd spiked those frequencies out, I thought the snare drum was sounding too thin, um, and I had to find a way out of that basically because I couldn't put those back in. Just wasn't sounding right to me. So here's our mix. Yeah. Chris, unbelievable player. And the funniest guy of all time. So I've got this mute set up here. This is going to take out the backing track and some of the reverbs. So you can listen to the drum sound. So let's solo Chris snare drum. So this is where I ended up. But if I take the EQ out, you can hear the frequencies I was talking about. So let's have a look. That's what I ended up doing. If we stick this back in now, I can solo that one. Just really irritating. By the time I had done any compression or parallel compression, it would bring all of that kind of stuff out and it didn't sound great. Same with this guy. And then generally I thought we had quite a lot of 600 in there. That kind of honky stuff. Not a fan. So that was the EQ we ended up with, but I found in the mix I kept thinking uh, it's just a little bit too thin. It's not it's not really floating my boat. It's not really as full and as fat and as punchy as I'd like. So I had a look at the, the SSL EQ, which is the EQ that I had on the end here, which I was just adding a bit of brightness there. And I boosted some 200 on that, but that was just kind of bringing back all those resonant frequencies that I would find they were irritating me in the sustain. Here's how I got round it. I just made it up. I just thought, give this a go, see if it works. You know, and it did, wicked. Doesn't always work. There's no right or wrong way, just gave it a go. So what I decided to do was, if I show you the mix page here, I've just duplicated it from there to there, exactly the same thing. All the same plugins on the second time around. I've still got my EQ on, still getting rid of those, those horrible frequencies, I still want those gone. But I was finding they were more problematic in the sustain, so I've gated it, I've stuck this Oxford gate on. This is a really great gate by the way, you can alter the decay dependent on the frequencies. It's awesome, awesome gate. So. I've gated it so I don't have those long sustains. And then it's only on the backbeat. All the ghosties and everything that Chris is doing is coming through on the, the original snare drum channel. But this one is only on the backbeats now, if I play it for you. If I solo that, and then look at this EQ, you can see I've rolled off some of the top there, some 8K where I'd boosted on the other one, some 3K, that was a bit annoying. And you can see I've boosted near probably near 10 dB of 200, all that kind of body and fatness. But there's no sustain in it because I've gated it and those frequencies have already rung out. It doesn't sound great by itself, but that's how I've got my fatness, just, just on the back piece. All the ghosties are there. I can add some snare bottom as well, bring those out a little. But those back beats sounding nice and flat. So if we can solo those. Imagine, fat snare drum sound without any of that horrible ringing. Boom. So if you thought this was useful in any way, shape or form, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, all of that social media. And I'll leave you with some Chris Common.